the Tosa region of Kochi Prefecture. That's where this Japanese hatchet comes from. A place that is famous for its blade quality. Now, I don't know if that translates to the axe design, but it definitely translates to the axe steel. Because after I sharpened this, I was pretty impressed with how it holds up. I even put it in some dirty, dirty bark uh, red oak at the end. For no reason, you should never use a hatchet like this. Anyway, let's uh, shape this handle up. Finishing up the handle shape with this uh, rasp. I'm just showing that you don't really need much. You, ju you could just have a stump and a rasp, and you can shape a handle. Take you through some of the process. We're going to skip some stuff erroneously. It's going to be one of the best uh, Japanese hatchet restorations you've ever watched this couple, last couple days. You'll be blown away by what it compares to in the last couple of hours with videos just exactly the same exact kind of video. I'm in the top 10 at least we're talking about in the last couple of 30 minutes maybe. This tool is called a draw knife because you draw it towards yourself with a W, not with an L at the end, how I pronounced it. Right now I'm just honing slash strapping it up with a scrap piece of leather, scrap piece of wood, just American sweet gum uh, scrap and a piece of scrap leather with some compound on it. Pretty uh, inexpensive. I guess all you'd have to pay for is the glue unless you make hide glue or something. When it comes to carving tools, the draw knife is very powerful because of its versatility. I wouldn't do what I do with a hatchet or a saw with it. Some people actually do remove a ton of material with a draw knife, but I'm sitting on a bench, so I'm not able to get tons of force with my entire body without kind of, you know, it's just, it's just a little goofy. I mean, I can. I'm on a short bench though, it's 36 inches. If it was four feet, I'd be able to get more leverage because I could like move back and forth on the bench, but I can't really do that much, especially when I'm working on the end of a long handle. Uh, that's, the you know, the vise is holding it out kind of long. Right now it's about, what, uh, eight inches, nine inches hanging off. So it's, it's not too much I'm working on, but sometimes like when I was working on the 53 inch handle, it was pretty difficult because some of the handle would be to my side or behind me even. So it, it would pay off to have a longer bench, but this is more than enough for most projects. Gotta make sure you chamfer this before banging on it. Chamfer your thumb as well. reason why I'm doing that is because I want the hang to be a little more open. It's a little closed, which means that the front of the edge is pointing too far downwards. 
so I need to remove material from the back and keep all the material on the front. All right, there was my second or third big mistake. I just took too much material off of the top uh, front of the tongue, so I had to fill the little gaps uh, on the side of the wedge at the front with shims. It actually turned out pretty nice because I got lucky. I didn't even think about the orientation of the shims, but they were pretty close. The medullary rays are just barely off by like you know 10 to 20 degrees so not too bad and uh some most people wouldn't know unless you told them probably the last time i need to uh put it in here once the tongue becomes above uh far enough you could just hit it out with a mallet This is just a little piece of white oak. Look how thin it is. And this is my drift. Now we're making contact on the back a little. That's good. So the way I'm comfortable doing this is I only work on the right side, my uh, dominant hand side. That's just what's comfortable for me. I I'm not comfortable going that way. So that means I can work on uh, the right side and the bottom of what what's facing me. work on the left side it's just not as comfortable there we go just a tiny little half round file really good to have a tiny half round file for that stuff no need for a dremel or anything three dollar file all right that's better See why I decided I had to smooth out the bottom. Look at that uh, 
Look at that shelf it created. When I go too far, I just stop. As long as it's inside the tongue, nobody's going to see that. You can get rid of the little frayed part with a, a little sweeping cut, but don't go any further. You're going to want contact. It, it, well, if you're going to actually be riding on this part of the tongue, I might keep dropping this down. I'm not sure yet, really. There's also, if it's the top of the tongue, sometimes you want to remove more than you think on the sides of the top of the tongue where there's a uh, contact with the eye you want the uh, that to be smaller so you can fit a bigger wedge and also there's just going to be more splay the kerf is going to be spread more if you get a bigger wedge and there's less material on the sides so that way that i mean that's what accommodates the bigger wedge really Here's something interesting I just found out. 
this is hard as hell. That makes sense why there's so much damage if it's hard. Well, looks like I gotta go back to the machines. Here's a little story I'd uh, like to tell you. It's a little life lesson. I, I wish it could get to the younger men, but it won't get to the younger men. Um, it, if I if I could have told myself back when I was younger, I wish I could have. So it was just, there was this girl throughout my whole uh, education, even probably starting somewhere somewhere in elementary school, and she would get made fun of a lot. She would get picked on and stuff and bullied. And eventually, you know, in high school, she would get beat up. Um, and she, there was nothing wrong with her. She was just a little nerdy, I guess, a little dorky. And and back then, people would call her ugly, but she wasn't really ugly at all. And I didn't really stand up for her, I feel like. I didn't stick up for this girl. Uh, I just kind of watched what happened to her when I was younger. And I, I have done that. Like, I, I'm not saying I wasn't mean to people or people weren't mean to me but i also a few times i stuck up for people um not saying i'm like a good guy or anything i'm just saying that it wasn't outside of the things i might do sometimes but i guess she was too radioactive socially and i don't really care about social stuff but at the same time i'm an insecure kid so it's gonna matter a little and i i saw her maybe 10 years later and i was looking like shit i felt like shit and i was looking like shit and she just looks at me and she goes, <laughs> she hugged me. She hugged me and then she just walked away. And I was like, you know what? She's better than me now. <laughs> She's better than me by a lot now. I feel, I'm sorry. Uh, I, <laughs> I just looked, I must have looked so pathetic to her. <laughs> I'm glad that she is not uh, doing badly. I, I, she looked like she was doing well. She was looking good. She was like going for a jog. Oh my gosh, she looked good. You know when you fuck up? When you're a little kid, you like uh, might not date a girl for stupid reasons. But when you're older, you're like, God damn it, what was I? So yeah, maybe just a word to the wise if you... If you have something for, if you have some feelings for the, uh, a young lady, no matter how old you are, uh, as long as it's legal and consensual, <laughs> don't be a little pussy, okay? Give it a go. Uh, and you know, you, you, you become two, one person that might think they're weak, uh, combining, two people that are like that, combining, can, can create something very strong. So don't fuck that up, you know? Um, you might, uh, that girl might help you become who you actually want to be type of thing. And, uh, uh, maybe who knows what, what I would be if I, if I told this girl, you know, something nice. It's not like I was mean to her, but I probably, uh, could have been nicer. I mostly just ignored what was happening to her. And yeah, well, uh, I don't know. She didn't get... She didn't get beat up too much. It was just one very embarrassing fight, I think. So, that's what I remember her by. And now she remembers me by... Ugh, look at this fucking piece of shit now. <laughs> I'm glad she got to have that moment, you know? And she didn't have a good childhood. You could also just tell when people don't have the best childhood. Maybe she had uh, some kind of alcoholic uh, parent or something. Or, or their parents were divorced or something. You, you know, you, you just know. Especially when you get older, you realize things like that. Like, man, I wish I, uh, I wish I talked to that girl who I'm pretty sure she lived in a heroin den. I wish I helped her out or something. Now all you can do is like tell little kids stuff like that, and you sound crazy. <laughs> hey, if a girl ever looks like she's from a heroin den, go ahead and give her like uh, some support, some moral support, maybe. <laughs> or if a, if a little kid he's, he's like I want to be a trash man and he wears the same clothes every day maybe let's be nice to Crazy Carl okay Crazy shout out Crazy Carl he was the fucking man I, I was nice to Crazy Carl but because he was funny to me maybe the other person didn't offer much for me <laughs> Crazy Carl was the man let me tell you a story about Crazy Carl <laughs> holy shit Crazy Carl I'm glad I'm remembering this Crazy Carl um, 
went to the bathroom in middle school one time, right? And he was gone for a little bit, and then all of a sudden the the fire alarm goes off, and he runs into the classroom covered in brown water. And he's like, I fucked up. I messed up, guys. (laughs) What he did was he took the bathroom pass, and he threw it up hard and high, I guess, and he hit the sprinkler, the, the... uh, whatever puts the fire out and it just exploded <laughs> something like that oh man it was brutal imagine being covered in disgusting rust water man tough day for him now that i'm older i relate a lot more to people that maybe don't care as much about the the, the aesthetic of what they look like um i'm in general i'm a form over uh, i'm a function over form kind of guy so if there's a hot girl under a big hoodie, I don't give a fuck if she's wearing a big stupid sweater. Uh, and, and, you know, in general. Um, maybe let's look under the sweaters before we judge next time. I didn't really get a big sense of accomplishment from finishing this hatchet. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's because the handle isn't perfect. Um, maybe it's because I thought it'd be a better carver. That was kind of not that good right there. (laughs) So what it doesn't provide in carving, it also isn't for this. So I'm not really sure what I would use this hatchet for. It doesn't really have a place, kind of a... For me, I just really wanted to, to kind of see and hold Japanese steel and, and and I like the rich history with hand tools um, I didn't get as much information as I wanted maybe but you know beggars can't be choosers and I was really begging I really asked for a lot of help <laughs> really was desperate so it was awesome that I actually ended up being able to swing something from Japan and I'm even doing it uh, with my style, which means I'm completely forgetting about what something's made for. I'm trying something else. <laughs> I mean, the house ball, I split sometimes with that. Uh, I made a 53-inch handle, and I, I'm, not, I'm not chopping down the biggest trees in the world. I'm uh, splitting kindling, and I'm fucking the handle up. So I'm glad I got to at least swing uh, the Japanese hatchet in a goofy way. I probably would prefer a maul or an axe, but um, it's still cool. And you know, it's not just a regular hatchet. I feel like there's there's something to this one. This one feels like it has soul to it. And not some dude who used to use it. I mean, like, it's soul food, you know? It was cooked up with a lot of love, and I like that kind of thing. So I appreciate whoever made this so I can try it out in a goofy way. So some fat, overweight... American can try it out in like uh, 50 to 100 years later. I don't think I ever said, but I think this weighs around one and a half pounds, maybe a little less. So really, bucking a like 10 inch diameter, not made for this, but you know, I guess if you're in a pinch, you could use this like to fell a small tree.